If you're lucky enough to have a fruit tree or two in your garden, you'll know just how wonderful it is to have fresh seasonal produce. But if you allow those fruit trees to become neglected, rather like the mangoes here in this orchard, then production declines. So I'm gonna give them an all over prune to whip them back into shape. When it comes to effective pruning, the first step is choosing the right tools. Secateurs are brilliant for detailed light work, small branches. A folding saw is excellent for harder wood, bigger pruning jobs, and it's really good for confined spaces in amongst a group of branches. And then there are loppers. This ratchet gives it extra strength. And if you've got extendable handles as well, you've got extra reach, really good for detailed work. Then there's the extension pruner. This is effectively just the saw, which allows you great flexibility for getting right to the top of the crown, but working on larger branches. For smaller branches, there's an extension tree pruner. These are basically secateurs with a great reach. They need a little bit of extra room to operate because of this grip here. You've got to be able to work that between the branches. And then there's the bow saw. A very good detailed cut for larger branches, but you do need to have space to operate them. And that's the complete set that I use. Occasionally, you might require something heavier duty, like a chainsaw. But for most pruning jobs, these tools are all the equipment you'll need. At first, looking at a neglected fruit tree can be a bit overwhelming. Where do you start? What stays? What goes? Well, fortunately, I've got a four-step process that not only works with mangoes, but with many other fruit trees as well. Firstly, identify structural branches and work back from these. The structural branches are the main limbs which support the canopy. Now it's important to identify the structural branches before you launch into a pruning frenzy because these must be retained. We're lucky with this particular tree because some formative pruning has already occurred and so I can easily recognise the eight structural branches. Next, remove any dead, diseased or dying wood. The dead wood can be removed with impunity and the larger branches are really easy to see. If you scratch them with your fingernail, you'll see that they're dry and brown. But with living tissue, just to check, scrape that with your fingernail and the tissue underneath is soft and green and alive. Look for visible signs of decay like snap branches, fungus and scratched or split bark. I'm using secateurs for the small stems, folding saw for the medium sized stems and bow saw for the larger branches. Now as you're pruning, you need to look for the branch collar. This is an area of tissue which surrounds the base of each branch and it's very special because it has the ability to heal and seal wounds and the timber underneath will be impregnated with compounds which defend the tree against disease. It will leave a little stub and that's good because the branch collar will regenerate and clean and heal that wound naturally. You can identify the branch collar quite easily by the transition between the flaking bark of the trunk and the smoother bark of this branch here and it follows a circular pattern around the base of the branch. So what's happening here, this branch has died and the branch colour around here is starting to try and heal the wound. So what I need to do is to get that dead wood out of the way so it can finish the job. So this, the branch colour has almost completely healed the wound and on this one, it's completed the healing job. Crossing branches. Now on this tree, we have a crossing branch. This little one has grown up against the main one. This causes a problem in time because as the wind moves it, it rubs, creates a wound, and that wound is kept permanently open, and that's an invitation for disease to attack the tree. This particular branch has died, so it's very simple to remove. Finally, work on the crown and canopy. Now the first aid work is done, it's time to turn our attention to the crown. 
A mango has the potential to grow to 40 metres high. This tree has been shaped already, so the canopy is about three metres high, and that is a safe height for picking the fruit. Having said that, it's important to thin some of the branches which are not likely to bear fruit. And by thinning those inner branches, you can increase airflow throughout the tree, and that reduces the risk of disease. Mangoes normally respond to pruning by sending out a big flush of foliage. Usually, the heavier the pruning, the more vigorous and numerous the flushes. However, they only flower and fruit on the ends of their branches and only do it on mature wood that is six weeks or older. So, too much pruning can take off all the flowers and promote lots of leafy growth. If you do this too close to the fruiting season, you can end up without any mangoes. Anthracnose disease is probably the most significant disease affecting mangoes, and it enters the flowers and affects the fruit. Now, once the fruit have been picked, tip pruning is the best way to remove leaves which are the most concentrated source of anthracnose spores. And mangoes respond really well to tip pruning. By removing the new growth back to old growth, you'll get new shoots, new flowers, and disease-free fruit. Well, now the pruning's done, you have to remember that this tree hasn't been pruned for a long time, so it does look like a lot of work. But if you do this once a year, it's really quick and simple. Now, there's a lot of pruning wounds. Don't be tempted to get a treatment and paint them over. These wound treatments seal in disease and they can slow down the natural healing process. As a final touch, it's worth taking some time to clear underneath trees to help them rebound after pruning. This vigorous grass is competing for valuable water and nutrients, so it's being brush cut down. Then I'll apply some poultry manure as a fertiliser. 15 kilos is enough for a tree of this size and age. I'll be sprinkling that around the drip line to encourage the roots to search out away from the base of the tree. Pruning a fruit tree doesn't have to be a daunting task. By using the right tools and following some simple techniques, it can actually be a pleasant way to spend an afternoon. And the results, quite literally, are the fruits of your labour. <laughs>